Just start with what's up, bros. All right, guys, what's up? Hey. Doing a little army of two discussion here. I guess we're wow. just going to talk about the series. We have the cover story, Devil's Cartel, and just want to go over what you guys thought of like the first game and maybe a little more emphasis on 40th Day. Bert, you may have an opinion or two about that. Well, I reviewed the games. I really don't like the series at all. I mean, I'm, I vehemently am opposed to the dude bro. I'm usually really capable of compartmentalizing like when a game's trying to have fun and kind of be off the cuff and when it's being serious about violence, but the juxtaposition of the two for this series pisses me off. I think you kind of have to be able to separate that dude bro attitude with the gameplay. You know, I like the Gears of War series. I think they're good games, but like, I don't really care about the story that much and like all of the kind of dude bro elements of that. It's like, whatever, I don't really care about these characters this much or anything. I just think it's, it's a fun shooter, especially co-op. Whereas when I first heard about Army of Two or in like the 40th day, I heard it was super dude bro-y and stuff and I kind of stayed away from it. And then when I, I picked it up and me and Jeff played through quite a bit of it um, before we went on our cover trip, and I really thought that it, it got a little bit more crap than it deserved. There's no story there, there's no interesting characters really, but uh, I thought it was a fun shooter. I mean, we, we had fun playing it, right? Yeah, I had a blast. Not that this is really a great choice, but I would rather take a game with no story over, you brought up Gears of War, over a series that has a story and it's just garbage, in my opinion. I think one of the most interesting things about the Army of Two series is that EA had sent the game out for review, and then based on negative feedback from people that had been playing the game or were getting ready to review it, EA pulled it and they delayed the game for yeah, what, four I played months? that build. I yeah. played that. I reviewed that first build, and uh, there were some elements of it I kind of liked a little better. They cut out some god awful stuff. Like yeah. there was a whole hovercraft scene that <laughs> was just terrible. But one of the things I liked about it, it, it kind of felt more like a Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure a little bit. Okay. In that there are these two complete idiots. Like they understand nothing about the way the world works. They're just good at shooting people. And they work for a private military contractor. And they were sort of figuring out along the way through the, their thick skulls that maybe PMCs aren't all they're cracked up to be. And it was overtly political too. Like yeah, it was, yeah, it was very political. and. The, the version that came out, almost all of that was stripped out. When we were on the trip, I tried pinning them down and they were all kind of wishy-washy, but EA wouldn't really say why they had such faith in this series immediately, you know what I mean? Like, I think a lot of publishers would have just kind of cut their losses. If they'd already sent review code out, you know, the, the money that they must have cost them to delay it that long and to like, send out new builds and everything like that. They kept saying like, you know, there is gold at the core. I remember that's right. what they kept yeah. saying. Right. And it's the like, gold is the co-op because, I mean, that was the co-op renaissance when that game mm -hmm. came out. Everybody yeah. wanted to play a co-op game. Conflict Denied Ops sold a million copies. Mm -hmm. Like a third tier shooter sold a million copies because it had co-op. Yeah. That's what people wanted. So I think that was the impetus for them to go back and reconfigure some stuff. The one thing I will say that I liked about 40th Day, I thought their uh, weapon upgrade system was pretty deep for a game of that nature. And it's kind of astounded that game did have multiplayer. They did try to do a horde type mode. Mm -hmm. There was no progression. There was no ranking system. There was no gun upgrades in the multiplayer. It's like you're making a modern day shooter. Yep. You have all of these other games to look at as inspiration and you just drop the ball completely. What did you think of the agrometer and that? Stuff? See, that, that seems superfluous to me. I mean, anybody who's played a shooter knows that when they're shooting at one guy, you can flank mm -hmm. around the other. They try to gamify this system that's existed basically since the dawn of time when there's been shooters. And the other system that I really had problems with was the moral. Oh, decision yeah. making yeah. in that too. You know, like they got a ton of crap for the first one because it was all high fives and pissing on cupcakes and whatnot. The second one, they tried to be serious and somber and they put you in these moral circumstances where you had no context within to which make a decision. Yeah. And then you make the decision and you watch it play out and then I would go back and watch the other way play out. There was no way you could have known it would go that way either no, way. No. So it completely deflated the point of having a moral decision. Like, what's the one where like the guy's about to rape that girl and you shoot him, but then he goes to the hospital and then the lady goes into the hospital and shoots him and she's has an a baby or yeah, something? Yeah, she's I... gonna kill the baby and then he kills her. It's something just completely incoherent. Oh, the so one with I the, know what you mean. Like the tiger one, we have the choice of getting the money from the guy who's in the tiger's cage or a weapon or whatever. You have to shoot the tiger in the process or just leave it alone. And if you leave it alone, somehow the tiger escapes and then gets to the backseat of a car, and this guy robs a bank, and then the tiger, he sees him in the rearview mirror, and it kills him. So. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> I, I, mean, I, I mean, I would love to see an Inside the Actor's Studio with, you know, 
Alex Hutchinson, the creative director, who now is on Assassin's Creed 3, and just like walk us through why they did what they did with that game. I mean, I don't get it. Like the parts I like about it are, you know, me and him are running up this temple place in Shanghai, and there's a bunch of heavies going around, and we gotta figure out how to take cover, but these guys are coming around over here. Like, it's cool strategizing that, and like, you know, you get this guy's attention, I'll shoot his back. That stuff's cool. I mean, the moral decisions, but I'm that with, stuff's I'm with better that. in almost every other co-op game as well. What, what do you see as an example of a co-op game that really, really nailed it? Like, you know, like the, the way Army of Two does. Well, I think the best co-op game that's come out this generation is Left 4 Dead. I, I don't even think it's close for me personally. I mean, that game puts teamwork at such like a central focal point in the experience where if you're not working together, you're screwed. Gears of War, we mentioned earlier, I, I, I like the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay. I feel like they're really good at designing game systems. The story does nothing for me either. Yeah. I mean, it really doesn't. What about something like Borderlands? Oh, I love Borderlands, okay. yeah. Those are all great examples of great co-op, and I don't think Army of Two ever reached it, but it did resonate, you know, like the game sold millions of copies. So clearly it's speaking to somebody. I understand that the tone was kind of off the mark, or completely off the mark, but I just prefer a setting that's a little more grounded as opposed to something that's just bizarro sci-fi. Shooting terrorists is more fun than bugs, I think, you know? Yeah, exactly. I don't know if that's where you're going with that, but like, yeah, that's exactly I, where I like going. That. I'm really curious to see what they do with the new one because obviously they're saying to us, we're taking a step back again from the dude bro stuff. We're gonna make it more serious. We're putting it into a real world volatile conflict yeah. in Mexico, so. It still has the zebra guns and the, you know, crazy well, blinged out. Okay, I will And complete. the masks, the masks are still there, right? Yeah. Everybody has masks. But the blinged out guns, I will absolutely defend that because you remember after Gaddafi was overthrown and they oh, were raiding right. his yeah, palace, yeah. like they had the blinged out pistol. I mean, yeah, like oh, yeah, yeah. super rich, crazy dudes like bling out weapons. But would like, PMC guys be doing that, you know? Why not? If they're dude bro enough, they yeah. will. How do you know that they didn't capture those guns from a warlord? <laughs> because you go into the customization Let's menu and pick your paint yeah. job. <laughs> I read the novelizations, have you? One wish for Devil's Cartel. Just big, dumb action. Big, dumb action? Yeah. All right. Co-op, big, dumb action. With a mature storyline, or you don't even care I, about that? You're just gonna I hit past I just wanna blow stuff up. Okay. In that series, I just wanna blow stuff up. I just want it to stop sucking. Yeah. You know, like I just really simple, like reach a base level of competence and all the major facilities that you're gonna need to present here and just don't suck. The thing that Julian Beek, the executive producer, said, and I, I completely would love to see this. He said that he wants to make a game where if someone walks in while you're playing it, you won't feel dirty. Yeah. And I would like that. <laughs> where you can especially like uh, the writer was saying that he also wants a story that you can explain to someone, which would be a revelation for our Me Too. And scene. 